Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. I'm Drew Geraci. Today, pretty exciting day because I'm gonna show you a bunch of different ways that you can create your own external SSDs using uh, NVMe SSDs and also enclosures for USB 3.1, 3.2, and also Thunderbolt 3. These are super easy to make and you know if you've got the time and you've got the tenacity to do it, anybody can do this. And this is perfect if you're into photography or cinematography and you wanna have you know, a large volume set of drives with you, but you don't necessarily wanna take up the space that a normal, say, 7200 RPM drive would take up. So um, these little guys right here, uh, this is a two terabyte SSD NVMe, uh, and this transfers at about 600 to 800 megabytes per second, which is impressive via USB uh, 3.1. And then we've also got a, a Thunderbolt 31 uh, right here, and this transfers a little bit under a gig a second, uh, just depending on what NVMe SSD you're running. So um, a lot of different flavors, but these are so easy to make. I'm gonna put the, uh, the actual enclosures that I use down below in the, uh, the description, as well as the SSDs that I use. Now, I would recommend using um, higher volume SSDs, whether you're talking about maybe one terabyte, two terabyte, or four terabytes. The larger the, uh, the capacity of the hard drive itself, the um, more performance you're gonna get out of it, the larger the cache. Um, as well as the speed when you're uh, doing read and writes too. So um, these are great. And all of these connect either by uh, USB-C um, or Thunderbolt 3, just depending on what type of connectivity you have. Uh, I do recommend that if you pick up one of these uh, external hard drives, that you choose the USB-C uh, 3.1 or 3.2 because it just gives you the more or, or gives you a more versatile range of what you can choose from and what platforms you can go to. And these are great because they work for both Windows and Macintosh computers. So you don't have to worry about you know doing uh, multiple uh, formats for them. It formats and works perfectly across both um, types of system architectures. So it's fantastic. Um, I've been using these for the past year or so and the speeds are really great. I'll show you guys a live demonstration there. Uh, but I just want to show you uh, really quickly how easy it is to create your own SSD. You can find these um, usually pretty cheap, $50 or under. Um, and the SSDs, if you can get a good deal at uh, Amazon, usually somewhere in the range of 200 to 250 for a nice two terabyte hard drive. So um, what I would recommend too is getting yourself a nice set of uh, jewelers screwdrivers because they always come in handy, you know. You never know when you need to screw in something very tiny and very minute. So I'm gonna pick up my little screwdriver here. Actually, I've got it in my pocket. <laughs> and it's really easy to do. You've got, uh, this is how, look how tiny this is. This is the screwdriver and this is the NVMe drive. Super tiny. So what it is, you've got four different screws, two on each side. Um, you easily just unplug these. I wanna show you, this is gonna be real time so you can see how quickly and easily it's done. Unscrewing right here. Great. Make sure you keep the screws together. That way, uh, when you're ready to put it together, you can have it all in one spot. You don't lose them. But the face of this just comes right off. And then inside, you can see that there's just an NVMe drive right there. And this is all that it is. It's super easy to do. Um, you can end up going with some of the other ones out there. They've got SanDisk, they've got GTEC, and they're all pretty much the same um, kind of architecture. It really just comes down to the different types of heat sink and cooling that comes with each type of these enclosures. But for the most part, the ones that come from, this is an off-brand one right here. Um, I don't even know who this is. This is Rondongson. They work great though. Um, but my favorite ones are the uh, Sabrance. They, uh, they do a really nice job, um, really good thermal cooling. Um, they don't ever get too hot and you can use these um, for hours on end. I haven't had any kind of thermal throttling at all when transferring to and from these. And I've transferred, this is a four terabyte one, um, a lot of different 8K and above footage to and from this, and it works like a beast. It's, it's just super awesome. Um, but this is all that it is. You just unscrew this right here. You'll pop in your NVMe, and you can use any flavor you want. So this is a Sabrant Rocket uh, two terabyte PCIe 3 one. Um, so it transfers at about um, 2,400 uh, megabytes to 3,000 megabytes per second, um, theoretically. Uh, but through this guy, with the, which is USB 3.1, it transfers at about 600 to 700 megabytes um, concurrently. So it's, it's pretty nice. Now, um, there are other flavors as well. So inside here, we're using, um, I've also got a Samsung uh, 970 EVO. Uh, these work really well. These are super nice, very cheap. You can get a couple of these for uh, maybe a hundred bucks or so. And cats, because you know when cats come, this is Philip, everybody. Philip, say hi, you're in the middle of a YouTube video. This is good. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, Philip's really excited about NVMe uh, SSD storage as well, as you can see. Is that right, buddy? Do you like that? That's so good. Um, but it's so easy that even cats can do this, right, Philip? Can you go ahead and screw this in? No? Okay, good. Um, but once you're done with that, all you got to do <laughs> is kind of taking over the, uh, the table here. And we're going to let him do it. It's a, it's a cat day. Um, we've got our open end right here. We just slide it right back in as it is. Take our two screws. Plop them in. And this is the longest time it takes is, is right here. Now I'll tell you a story. I was out on a shoot in the middle of New York City and I really needed a lot of hard drive space quickly. And um, there were a bunch of different types of enclosures that I could find, but the Zabrant was the only one that was available at B&H Photo. And I was like, hey, you know what? I'm just gonna try this one out. And I ended up buying uh, three of them and throwing in um, three two terabyte um, hard drives. And they literally saved my ass on a shoot uh, just for the speed that they were doing because we had to offload footage pretty quickly for this uh, feature film that we were working on. And the client needed the footage um, like that second. And we were able to offload um, and unload the footage almost, not instantly, but within a matter of you know 20 to 30 minutes, we could have this full um, of a, a two terabyte capacity, which is just fantastic. But again, um, all you gotta do is find the ones that are for USB 3.1, 3.2, um, Thunderbolt 3, which are great if you have Thunderbolt 3 architecture, but Thunderbolt 3 is probably gonna be going away shortly, so think about it for the future. Um, I'd really recommend going with just the USB standard because you'll still get that 10 gigabit connection, which is gonna give you upwards um, of a thousand megabytes per second or one gig per second. Uh, the Thunderbolt 3 can give you a little more than one gig per second, but then it really just depends on the uh, bottlenecking of the computer that you're using. So the speeds usually um, are somewhere around the 500 to uh, 1000 mark. I'm gonna set Philip down here. Everybody, this is Philip. <laughs> He's gonna go away. Perfect. Um, and that's it. And you can take these with you. I've got, uh, I've got six or so of these put together right now. Um, I take these everywhere with me, whether I'm going on a photo job or a video job. It just makes transferring to and from my laptop here uh, a breeze. And I will say that they, they do store away quite nicely. So you could pack six of these together and they form basically the size of one um, normal sized uh, 7200 RPM, five and a half inch drive. Um, hard drive. So um, really recommend doing these. Very easy to make um, and super simple to, uh, to do it yourself. So hopefully you found this video uh, enlightening and you learned something from it. Uh, what kind of enclosures do you guys like to use? Um, I'm always happy to hear what everyone else is using. Um, if you have any questions or comments, put them down below. Um, as always, please like and subscribe and happy shooting. Thanks everybody.